any pain that the regime can inflict, they're going to do it. They're the ones inflicting the pain because they know they've got the media in their back pocket. And they know that the media is going to blame the Republicans for it. And this is why the Republicans cave, folks. They don't want to be blamed for the Here, grab somebody 21. This is Obama uh, this afternoon at Martha's Table Food Pantry. You ever heard of that? I had neither. Obama's at Martha's Table Food Pantry. It's uh, he, he, what he, he volunteered to make sandwiches for the homeless. So he's making sandwiches for the homeless at Martha's Table Food Pantry. I mean, actually, it's Martha's Table Food Pantry is what it is. It's another thing I've never heard of. I never heard of a USDA no money down by a house program, and I'd never heard of Martha's Table. But Martha's Table in caps a food pantry. And so the reporters were there, obviously, to, to document Obama's compassion and his caring and his concern for the downtrodden. And he spoke to reporters about the shutdown, and this is what he said. Seeing this racemanship as a strategy time and time again uh, to try to extract extreme or partisan concessions. There are going to be differences between the parties. There are going to be differences in terms of budget priorities. But we don't need to inflict pain on the American people or risk uh, the possibility that America's full faith and credit is damaged uh, just because one side is not getting its way. It's Obama not getting his way. But here he just admits it. We don't need to inflict pain on the American people. He's the one that's doing it. Because he's the one that holds the power in Washington. He determines what's opened and closed during this shutdown in which most is open. There's only 17% of it that's uh, that's shut down. So let's grab somebody. Number one, I was going to play these three earlier. This is an example of how the entire Washington press corps is just totally caught up now, totally swept up in this global catastrophe that is just awaiting us right around the corner up first, good morning, America Today, Jonathan Carl. The lack of any apparent urgency around here is just plain bizarre. There is nothing scheduled at the White House. The Senate doesn't come back in until 2 o'clock this afternoon. There are no meetings scheduled, at least not yet, between the major players. Oh, my God, they're not even talking. Oh, no. It's a catastrophe. The leaders in Washington are not even talking. And, of course, people in America cannot go through the day Without the government, people outside the Beltway, they can't live unless people in Washington are talking to each other. They can't live, they can't get through the day unless people are negotiating with each other. And there's no sense of urgency, which is the way it is in negotiations until the last minute. Here's Robin Roberts, also on Good Morning America Today. And she's she's talking with their economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis. But how the stock market is expected to react to Washington. Now, this is interesting. The regime expected the market to plunge today. They wanted the market to plunge today. The market didn't plunge today. They are a little discombobulated over this. The market actually came out, opened up. The regime thought it was going to plummet because there's no urgency, because there are no talks, because there are no negotiations, because the Republicans aren't talking to anybody, and Obama can't get them to talk, and that the market didn't panic. But here's Robin Roberts and Rebecca Jarvis before the market opened, I believe, talking about what they expect to happen. Wall Street is bracing for the worst this morning with no deal in sight. How will the markets react? It could be an ugly day for your 401k. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis is live there on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. This morning, the International Monetary Fund is warning of an international global catastrophe. Massive worldwide disruptions with consequences for all if the U.S. were to default on its debt as we wade into this unprecedented territory. As we speak, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 20.29. It's up. was up a little higher than that. But they really... See, Christine Lagarde, 
that cadaverous-looking IMF babe, she comes out. Well, she got the George Hamilton tan and wrinkles and the white hair. You know, when you look at it, it reminds me of Ma Richards. When I looked at Ann Richards, I said, iron your face. Do something. You're on television. And I think the same way when I look at this babe. Iron your face. Anyway, she's out predicting total catastrophe. A total collapse because of the United States might blow through its debt limit. And all of this, folks, again, I'm blue in the face. I don't know what good it does. But I'm just going to keep telling you. There is no way that we will default on paying our bills unless Obama simply refuses to. Because we have the money coming in. The service on the debt every month is about $18 billion. And there is, on average, it changes every month. Tax revenue income changes every month. But on average, it's 200 to $225 billion a month of tax revenue coming in. A lot. We've got more than enough. Thomas Sowell has even written about this. We have more than enough to pay off the interest on the debt every month. There's no reason for a default unless Obama directs the Treasury Secretary not to make the payments. But there is constitutional law, I think even statutory law, that the president must make the the monthly debt payment on the interest of the national debt. That is a law. Not that that matters much to this regime. But the money is there. So they set it all up. I think it's funny. There's Robin Roberts and Rebecca Jarvis. Oh, no. The IMF is warning of an international global catastrophe. They're bracing for an ugly day for your 401k. And the stock market is up. Let me see what it is now. Up 24. He's up four points. Since I began this brief little monologue, it didn't plummet. It didn't crash. There's no panic. They can't believe it. Brett Baer, Fox News, this morning on Fox and Friends, Steve Ducey. So give us an update, Brett. Where are we right now? Because it looked like the House had something. Looked like the president might go along with it. And then he said, nope, not interested. What's going on out there? When we left Friday, you all know the markets had soared. There was this sense in the city that uh, things were headed in the right direction, even for a short term deal that kind of disappeared over the weekend as the Senate went back and forth and the negotiations stalled. I'll tell you, for all of the people who think that there's just going to be some solution automatically, Mm -hmm. uh, there are more people in the camp of, wow, this may actually happen. Yeah, it may actually. Yeah, we may actually not ever expand the debt limit. Wow, it may actually happen. I um I don't quite know how to express this. And I but it's to me I don't care who they are. I don't I don't care whether they are nominally conservative or full boat conservative or full boat liberal democrat. Everybody that lives and breathes inside the beltway, of course, that's the center of their universe, and whatever happens there is the only thing that's happening. It's the only thing of any importance. And so, as far as those people are concerned, whether or not the Senate and House Republicans end up talking to Obama, that's it. That's all that matters today. And, of course, for real people, ordinary average people outside the Beltway, all over this country, that is not the concern that they're facing. They're scared to death and angry over Obamacare. They look at an economy that's shutting down and doesn't provide them jobs. They look at the housing market not rebounding. There is no economic recovery. And all that's going on in Washington is this reporting on a horse race about who will win. Will Obama finally get his way? Will the U.S. default? We're not going to default on our payments. It simply isn't going to happen. That everything taking place in that town right now is designed to inflict pain on certain people, doesn't matter who, just certain groups of people, so that the table is set for Republicans to get blamed for it. But the fact of the matter remains that the people in charge, the people who have been elected, have shown in almost five years now that they are incompetent. They do not know how to grow an economy, if they're even trying. 
They do not know what steps to take to open up the job market, if they even care. They don't even know how to implement their prized program, Obamacare. They are just glaringly incompetent. And yet, the left looks at them and wants to cut them all kinds of slack because of their good intentions and their big hearts and the fact that they help people. How are they helping people? How is Obama helping anybody? He's not helping the ranchers in the blizzard. He's not helping people unemployed. And we've got a day of food stamp, 13 hours, food stamp cards not working, and a near national panic. It's just mind-boggling. Take a quick time out, folks, and be back and continue after this. 